Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm here to give you guys uh, another WWE All Talk video, and this is going to be the first of two that I'm probably going to do this week, or at least Sunday, because technically Sunday is a new week. Um, but in this video, I'm going to be reviewing all of the 205 Live episodes that have taken place prior to TLC, since there's a Cruiserweight match at TLC that has to do with the Cruiserweight division. I figured I would review all the 205 Lives before I watch TLC. and um, so this is going to be from November 28th, 2018 until December 12th, 2018, and I'm really excited to watch these episodes of 205 Live, because 205 Live is typically a really good show, so now that I've kind of discussed all that, um, let's get right into these 205 Live reviews. Okay, so starting off with 205 Live for November 28th, 2018. And on commentary for this show, and probably for the rest of the episodes that are going to be in this review, is Percy Watson, Vic Joseph, and Nigel McGuinness. And the show starts off with Mike Canellis versus Noam Dahl with Camille. Uh, uh, I messed that up. The show starts off with Mike Canellis versus Noam Dahl with Maria Canellis on commentary. And I thought this was actually a good opening matchup here. Uh, Noam Dahl dominates the matchup early, and to kind of get under Mike Canales' skin, he, like, waves um, at Maria Canales in, like, an asshole type of way, which I thought was funny. And he gets the advantage early. Mike Canales, though, goes to bounce his head off the announcer's table, but we stop. Um, Noam Dahl reverses it and bounces Canales' head off the announcer's table right in front of his wife. And Maria Canales gets upset about this, and Noam Dahl looks back at her, and this distracts him long enough for Mike Canellis to take advantage and beat the crap out of him and hit a snap suplex on the floor, which I thought was cool. And Mike Canellis gets the advantage throughout the rest of the matchup, and then Noam Dahl mounts a comeback, and then Mike Canellis hits a spine buster, and he's in control of the match, but then the Lucha House Party's music goes off, and Kalisto and Grand Madalee go out there, and... Mike Canellis is distracted about this, and he's making sure that his wife's okay, but behind the referee's back, Kalisto hits an Insiguri onto Mike Canellis, and Noam Dahl hits the Supernova for the win, and Noam Dahl gets the win. I actually like the way this was done. You could say that it's the faces gated up against the heel, but the heel got its comeuppance because obviously Mike Canellis and TJP on the previous episode uh, beat the crap out of the Lucha House Party, so I actually like the way this was done. I thought this was well done. So I like this. Good match, and Good way to continue the Lucha House Party, um, TJP, Mike Canellis, feud. And then, Akira Tozawa and the Brian Kendrick are backstage training, and it was just pretty damn funny. I would definitely recommend it. The Brian Kendrick's punching at it. Akira Tozawa and Akira Tozawa keeps telling him how to, and I like the friendship that the Brian Kendrick and Akira Tozawa have. And then, Drew Gulak and Gentleman Jack Gallagher do a promo. And they pretty much talk about how pathetic the Brian Kendrick is, how he's worthless um, because he's hanging up with guys like Akira Tozawa. And the first thing that they would have to see is a homeless version of Jack the Ripper. Um, and Drew Gulak says that next on the next episode, he's going to take care of the Brian Kendrick. So I'm excited to see that match, the Brian Kendrick versus Drew Gulak. I really can't wait to see that. Um, and then a day where Tommy returns. He squashes Levy something, I forget his last name, but he squashes an enhancement talent pretty much and destroys him. And then he continues to attack him after he's won the match. And who returns? None other than Aria Devali, who's been injured for months. And he has a face off with Adeo Tommy, thinking that it's going to lead to a feud. But instead, Aria Devali helps Adeo Tommy attack the enhancement talent. And he says that he respects. Hideo Itami. They shake hands, and that was pretty much the segment. I'm actually intrigued to see where this goes, so I'm actually interested in it. But I liked the return of Hideo Itami. I thought he looked very aggressive, and I really liked it. Then, TJP and Drake Maverick are backstage, and TJP says that he deserves the next Cruiserweight Championship match, but Drake Maverick says that his win-loss record hasn't been that great. So, then, the Canellas is walking. And they want to finish off the Lucha House Party once and for all. But TJP isn't interested in that. He wants to move on to bigger and better things. 
But the Maria Canella says that since we helped you, um, our offer wasn't for free. So you got to return the favor. So TJP then agrees with them. So Drake Maverick makes a match for the next episode, a Tornado Tag Team match. It's going to be TJP and Mike Canellas versus two members of the Lucha House Party, which when they advertise it, I guess it's going to be Kalisto or Lince Dorado. So that's fine. Um, I thought this was a good bad sig segment, though. And then it shows a vignette for the Lucha House Party. And then we had um, the main event. It was um, Mustafa Ali and Cedric Alexander versus Buddy Murphy and Tony Nese. And I thought this was a really good main event. Um, Mustafa Ali and Cedric Alexander get the advantage early in the matchup, and they really dominate Buddy Murphy and Tony Nese. But then Buddy Murphy makes a blind tag to Tony Nese, and he hits a wicked pump knee right onto Cedric Alexander. And they dominate Cedric Alexander for a little bit. But then Mustafa Ali gets the hard tag. He hits a double cross body onto Buddy Murphy and Tony Nese. And he runs wild for a while. But then Buddy Murphy hits a wicked tease, um, big boot. And Tony Nese pulls the rope down. And this causes Buddy Murphy and Tony Nese to dominate Mustafa Ali for a while. Buddy Murphy hit a wicked clothesline that completely turned Mustafa Ali inside out. I thought that was awesome. And yeah, they pretty much dominate him for a while, but then Mustafa Ali has a chance to make a tag, but um, Buddy Murphy uh, pulls him down from the ropes, and then eventually Mustafa Ali hits a wicked drop kick and tags in Cedric Alexander. He gets the hot tag on to Tony Nee. Um, actually, I think it was Buddy Murphy, and he runs wild on him for a while. And then they do... They go for like a double Spanish fly using Tony Nese as like a platform onto Buddy Murphy. But Buddy Murphy hangs up Mustafa Lee on the ropes, causing both of them to fall out of the ring. So Cedric Alexander hits a wicked flip dive on Tony Nese. And then Buddy Murphy and Mustafa Lee are legal. So Mustafa Lee goes into the win. Buddy Murphy hits a pump knee strike. And he goes for Murphy's law, but Mustafa Lee counters into a um, Tornado DDT. And Cedric Alexander tags himself in and hits the lumbar check on Buddy Murphy for the win. And that was pretty much the end of the match. It was a really good tag team match. Um, I thought it was awesome. They got a lot of time, too. Because um, I think they cut the Mike Canellas Noam Dahl match short, so that way they could give this match a lot of time. But I really enjoyed this match. I thought it was a really good tag team match. And everybody that was in the match made sense. Everybody had some type of issue with each other. And obviously the finish made sense because now this opens up the door for Cedric Alexander to finally get his his contractually obligated rematch clause for the Cruiserweight Championship since he pinned the Cruiserweight Champion. So I like the way they did the finish, and it was just a really good Cruiserweight match. And that was pretty much uh, 205 Live. I actually thought this was a really good show. I enjoyed pretty much everything on it. Hideo Itami's return, the Mike Kanellis Noam Da match, um, setting up the Brian Kendrick Drew Gulak match, and setting up the Tornado Tag Team match for next week. And I also enjoyed the main event. So I'm going to give this a B. I thought it was a really good show. I'm just going to give it a nice solid B. And that's pretty much the end of uh, this review of 205 Live. Now I'm going to watch the next episode. And then we'll view that when I'm done watching it. Okay, so now on to 205 Live for December 5th, 2018. And the show started off with Drew Gulak with Gentleman Jack Gallagher inside versus the Brian Kendrick with Akira Tozawa inside. And I thought they had a hell of a technical match. Um, if you really like technical wrestling, this is the match for you. Um, because it's really good. Um, Lee Brian Kendrick and Drew Gulak both um, exchange chain wrestling holds on each other and try to get each other into submissions. Um, Drew Gulak leaves a wicked gash right onto the side of Lee Brian Kendrick, which was really damn cool. And Lee Brian Kendrick hits a really cool dragon suplex. And then eventually Drew Gulak starts to get the upper hand. He dominates the Brian Kendrick for a while. He goes for the Gulak, but Gulak turned it like into an um, almost like an ankle lock, which was pretty damn cool. And the Brian Kendrick mounts a comeback. He hits a really cool drop kick. He hits a second dragon screw um, suplex. I should have just said dragon suplex, but whatever. And Gulak hits a really cool clothesline. Um, he got Kendrick into a submission a ton of times. Kendrick got him into Captain Hook, but Gulak got to the ropes. And eventually, 
Um, Kendrick knocks Gulak on the outside, and he throws him into the apron. And um, Tozawa, Jeremy Jack out her ambushes Tozawa and throws him into the post. And then um, Kendrick um, hits the slice bread number two onto Gulak. But then when he's about to make the cover, Gentleman Jack Gallagher interrupts it. So I didn't really like the fact that this, we had this lawn match and it didn't really have a finish, but whatever. I'm gonna, um, I think this is setting up a future match. And afterwards, Gulak and Gallagher def, uh, beat down Kendrick and Gulak, puts him in the Gulak. And Tozawa tries to make the save, but Gentleman Jack Gallagher beats the crap out of him and hits a wicked headbutt on Tozawa, laying him out. But I thought this was a good way to open the show. And I'm assuming it's going to build to another tag team match between. Um, Kendrick and um, Tozawa versus Gulak and Gallagher, which I think would make sense. Then Drake Maverick interviews Buddy Murphy, and we found out that we're going to have a future Cruiserweight Championship match between Buddy Murphy and Cedric Alexander since on the previous episode, Cedric Alexander pinned Buddy Murphy, and Buddy Murphy talked about how uh, the only reason he lost is because Cedric Alexander and Mustafa Ali conspired against him to win. They need he he needed they it took both of them to beat him when Mustafa Ali has beaten both of them singularly. And he talks about how he's may have been a polarizing figure in two oh five live, but he's not here on two oh five live to make friends. And Drake Mavic has put it over the match talking about how this is the rubber match and how they this time it's not gonna be in any of their hometowns. And Buddy Murphy says that this is going to be the end of the age of Alexander um, and tries to get play mind games with Cedric Alexander by saying that he's still in Mustafa Ali's spotlight. And then he says that he wants Drake Maverick to make two matches next week to prove um, that they really are as good as they say they are, where uh, Buddy Murphy will face somebody and Cedric Alexander will face somebody. So overall, I really like this segment. I thought Buddy Murphy came across really well here. And it makes me really look forward to uh, the Cruiserweight Championship rematch. Then next, we had Alia Davari versus Clay Roberts. Alia Davari wins at a squash. So he hits the hammerlock clothesline. He goes to cover Clay Roberts, but then he chooses not to. He hits a second one, and he goes to cover him again. But he um, chooses to continue to inflict damage. And now Alia Davari just hits clothesline after clothesline on him to eventually the point where the referee just has to stop the match. And Aria Devali wins. I like this, though. It made Aria Devali look really strong coming back. And we see that a day what time he was watching the match from backstage, still setting up, you know, their alliance. Um, then Mustafa Ali cuts a promo and talks about how at Survivor Series he may have fallen down, but he's finally risen back up next week. And he said that he is happy that Cedric Alexander has a title match, but he said whoever is the Cruiserweight champion coming out of that match, I hope they're ready to put on a strong fight because I know I am. So I like this because it builds up future contenders for a possible Cruiserweight title match. And I imagine that at some point Mustafa Ali will win the Cruiserweight Championship, so I like this. And then Cedric Alexander gets interviewed and he said that he's not going to uh, buy in to Buddy Murphy's mind games because um, he was able to be Cruiserweight Champion without those mind games. And he accepts Buddy Murphy's challenge um, for the next episode. And then Noam Tal cuts a promo. And he's upset with Buddy Murphy. That he screwed him out of his match with Tony Nese. So he wants Bu Buddy Murphy to face him. And it's not about the title. He just wants revenge. I like this though. It sets up a, uh, Because it sets up a future program for Buddy Murphy. For a, a title match or something. Then you had the main event match. It was a tornado tag team match. TJP and Mike Canellas with Maria Canellas inside versus Kalisto and Lince Dorado. Grant Madalik wasn't there because he was doing a live event in Chile at the time. And I thought this was a really good main event. Uh, Kalisto and Lince Dorado come out there with a, um, Penelope and a ton of piñatas and some Buelo hats. And the match starts off. Kalisto and Lince Dorado hit a lot of really innovative high-flying moves, getting the advantage on uh, Mike Kanellis and TJP, but then eventually Mike Kanellis and TJP get the advantage when um, they throw TJP into the step. They throw no, sorry, they throw Kalisto into the steps, and for a while they dominate Lince Dorado. Kalisto tries to mount some offense, but Mike Kanellis plants some ribs first into the barricade, and um, eventually Kalisto tries to mount a comeback. 
Mike Canales hits a really cool Russian leg sweep off the apron, driving himself and Lindsay Dorado into the uh, barricade, which was awesome. And TJP gets the advantage for a while. He gets um, Kalisto into an STF. He gets him into a knee bar, but Kalisto gets the ropes. And Kalisto hits a wicked super kick onto TJP and Mike Canellis. And Lindsay Dorado comes in and mounds a comeback for a while. And then the match just really starts to break down. Uh, Kalisto and Lindsay Dorado do the whole bit where they say, get the pinatas. And they get like the, they had like a stocking uh, that was full of little pinatas. And they hit the um, Tower of Doom spot onto TJP. And they try to cover him. But Mike Canellis breaks it up. Well, that, which that was kind of off because Lindsay Dorado still had him pinned and had the match won. So that was a little silly. And they do things by taking uh, where the Canellises and TJP take the pinatas and like break them and stuff. And then eventually the finish comes when Kalisto throws the pinata at Maria Canellis and she falls on her husband. And Kalisto, Kalisto hits the Salida del So on TJP for the win. Uh, I would, I'm away with Kalisto and Lindsay Dorado winning. Uh, and I thought this was a fun match. You could say the pinatas was a little goofy, but I kind of like goofy stuff like that. So I actually thought it was entertaining. And then we find out that the, the matches that Buddy Murphy and Cedric Alexander are going to have on the next episode. Um, on the next episode, it's going to be Buddy Murphy versus Noam Dahl, which makes sense because that match was set up on this show. And Cedric Alexander versus uh, Tony Nietzsche, which obviously makes sense since he's in an alliance with Buddy Murphy. And they've kind of been feuding anyways. And at the end of the show, Tony Nese cuts one of those little selfie promos talking about how not, uh, when he defeated Cedric Alexander, not only did he beat him, he broke him. And he says that he's going to beat him up so bad in the next episode that he won't even be able to make his Cruiserweight Championship match. And that was the end of that. I thought Tony Nese cut a really good promo, probably the best promo he's ever cut in his career. And that was 205 Live. And I thought it was another really good show. I really enjoyed pretty much everything on it. I really enjoyed... Uh, Gulak versus Kendrick. I really enjoyed the build up to the Cruiserweight Championship match. Alia Davari's squash match I enjoyed. Mustafa Ali's promo I enjoyed. Uh, Noam Dar's promo I enjoyed. And I enjoyed the Tornado Tag Team match. So uh, I'm going to give it a, um, a a nice solid B. I thought it was a really good show. And that's pretty much my review of this episode. And now I'm going to review the next episode. And then that would pretty much be the end of the video. Okay, so now we have 205 Live for December 12th, 2018. And uh, prior to this, though, there was a WWE.com exclusive that came out just before Monday Night Raw, where Drake Maverick announced that at TLC, uh, Buddy Murphy would defend his Cruiserweight Championship against Cedric Alexander, which obviously I'm happy that the match made it to TLC. Um, I think it makes sense since, you know, they have the rematch take place at a major WWE pay-per-view um, after that huge moment that happened at Super Showdown and stuff. And I like the fact that they're putting the Cruiserweights on the show again. Um, it makes that show feel different and it makes it unique. I like it because I think the Cruiserweights have a place on the show. Um, so we had the first match on the show. This was obviously coming off the previous episode where Buddy Murphy and Cedric Alexander were both going to have matches. And we had Buddy Murphy versus Grand Mandalik. Um, I know it was supposed to be Noam Dahl, but they did give a storyline reason for it. I don't know if it's a legitimate reason, but apparently Noam Dahl wasn't medically cleared to wrestle. So they went with uh, Grand Mandalik instead, which I thought was a fine replacement. You can always do a match between Noam Dahl and Buddy Murphy in the future. If I was to pick a place, I would pick... Um, NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool, you know, since Noam Dog kind of fits that UK show feel and Buddy Murphy would work as well. So I kind of hope that's when they do the, um, the match. They make that match for the Cruiserweight title. They build that match up for NXT TakeOver, um, NXT UK TakeOver Blackpool, but we'll have to wait and see. But I still thought we had a really good match, actually, between Grand Metalik and Buddy Murphy. What were you expecting, though? I mean... Um, they're both really good professional wrestlers, and obviously you would expect them to have a really good professional wrestling match. They both start off by kind of feeling each other out with some nice chain wrestling holds where neither one just gets the advantage over the other. And then Grand Man Elite gets the advantage. He hits a really cool head scissors, knocking Buddy Murphy out of the ring. He hits a really cool flip dive on him. And he hit, 
From the barricade, he hits a really cool head scissors right on to Buddy Murphy. I thought that was awesome. He gets him in the ring, tries to pit him. Buddy Murphy kicks out of it. And then Grand Metalik goes for, like, um, a crossbody. But Buddy Murphy catches him into a suplex, which was really damn cool. Uh, but Grand Metalik kicks out of that. And then Buddy Murphy dominates the matchup for a while. And then Grand Metalik mounts a comeback. He goes for the Metalik driver, Buddy Murphy. Counters that, and then uh, the match pretty much is back and forth. Uh, Grand Metalik hits a really cool, um, like, um, Spanish fly and a springboard um, cross body. But eventually he goes for the mood salt. Buddy Murphy gets the knees up, and he ends up hitting a wicked power bomb under Grand Metalik, covers him. Grand Metalik kicks out, and then um, he goes for Murphy's law, but. Um, Buddy Grand Metalik um, counters into a roll up. Buddy Murphy kicks out, and then he goes for another springboard cross body. But Buddy, Buddy Murphy catches him into a Murphy's Law and gets the win. Um, obviously, it makes sense since Buddy Murphy's defending the title Sunday. It makes sense to make him look strong. But I thought they had a hell of a matchup, um, and I thought it was really damn good. Then Akira Tozawa and the Brian Kendrick are backstage, and Drake Maverick informs them. Um, that on the next episode of 205 Live, which is tonight's episode that just aired, uh, that they're going to face Drew Gulag and Gentleman Jack Gallagher in a street fight. And he wanted to know what the reaction to that was going to be. And they really don't have a reaction, but he was expecting one since um, Akira Tozawa and the Brian Kendrick fought in a street fight in 2017. I remember because I watched that match when I was in Texas. Um, but the Brian Kendrick then says that uh, originally, when he came back to WWE, he was always trying to manipulate people like Akira Tozawa because um, he knew that this was going to be his last shot in WWE. But in a way, he wants to thank Gulak and Gallagher for beating the crap out of him because it's got him to change his ways. And Akira Tozawa is confused about this because Kendrick still looks the same. So he says that they're going to go do something about this. And then Tozawa walks back in and... Does a joke saying that Drake Maverick is fired for losing the Raw Tag Team titles last night. And he leaves and uh, Maverick says, but you can't fire me, I'm the GM. I thought it was funny. I thought Tozawa was awesome here. And then Drew Gulak and Gentleman Jack Gallagher do a promo. And they talk about how now that it's a street fight, they can go as far as they want to and erase um, Kendrick and Tozawa out of WWE. Great promo. And then Aria Davari gets interviewed, and he says um, that the reason he's been hurting his opponents is because uh, for months when he had an injured neck, he had to watch 205 Live, and people would just be all flash, and oh, that's all they care about. Um, he's he's sick. Of, um, he misses the old days when people would just show up and fight, and he's here to bring that type of change. A day where Tommy comes up and congratulates him on his performance the previous episode, and Aria Davari then says. Now that is a superstar that I can get behind. So obviously that explains the storyline. I don't mind the storyline, but it seems like a weird gimmick because Gulak pretty much has the same gimmick and the storyline really seems confusing because Buddy Murphy, who's the Cruiserweight champion, doesn't care about any type of Flash stuff. So I thought that was really weird. Then we had the main event. It was Tony Nese versus Cedric Alexander. Cedric Alexander's shoulder was all taped up in this match with the, the commentators really didn't play up on all that much, which was really weird. Um, but we had the match, and it was also a really good match. I think the match, though, that they had when, uh, um, after Super Showdown was a little bit better, but this was still a really good match. Um, I did like how, uh, Tony Nese was consistently one step ahead of Cedric Alexander. Like, when he went for his springboard clothesline, Tony Nese caught him into an uppercut, and he took over the match for a while, and then Cedric Alexander made a comeback. He actually ended up hitting a really cool, um... Flatliner coming into the win, and Tony Nese had a gut buster, um, hit a really cool flip dive on the outside, went for the shoot and stop press. This time, Cedric Alexander moved out of the way. They both tried to exchange roll ups on each other. Cedric Alexander hit a Mitchie Nuku driver. Tony, um, Tony Nese still kicked out, but then eventually the finish comes with Cedric Alexander hits the Noalizer into the Lumbo check for the win, um, which obviously makes sense for Cedric Alexander to go over because it makes him a strong challenger going into TLC. And then afterwards, Buddy Murphy comes out, and they have a face-off, and Cedric Alexander challenges him to come down and fight him. 
And I actually didn't think he was going to, but Buddy Murphy did, which I was kind of surprised about. And they get into a fight, and Cedric Alexander fights him off and hits a flip dive on the outside. And Cedric Alexander stands tall, um, and Buddy Murphy is sent packing, and that was pretty much um, the entire um, episode of 205 Live. But I really liked this episode. I thought this did a really good job of building up to the uh, Cruiserweight Championship match at TLC, and that was kind of the whole point upon, uh, um, around this episode. But I really liked the matches they did on this show, and I really liked how they built up to that match. And I'm really looking forward to that Cruiserweight Championship match so much that I actually want to go and watch TLC right now. I can't, um, I'm actually really looking forward to it. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to sit down and give TLC a watch, and then that will and have my review of that up at some point. But that's pretty much the end of this review. If I had to rate this episode, I didn't give it a letter grade. I'm going to give it a B, another really good episode. And 205 Live just continues to be really good. Um, and I really like it. So, yeah. And I guess 205 Live, too, isn't going to go back to uh, Tuesdays after SmackDown because Mixed Match Challenge is over. And I would have thought that since Mixed Match, Mix Match Challenge is over, uh, they would have put 205 Live back to after SmackDown. But I guess they're not. They're going to keep it on Wednesdays, which I think is a good idea because um, I feel like people already get smacked down out of the system. They don't want to sit down and watch another show. Another show. Uh, this way it is before NXT, and everybody really likes 205 Live and NXT. And I hear that it um, does draw better ratings on Wednesdays. So I actually think that's a great idea. Uh, but that's pretty much my review of this episode of 205 Live. And that's pretty much the end of this video. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please make sure you guys like, comment, and share this video so people will watch it. Make sure you guys subscribe to this channel for more content and click on the bell. So that way every time I upload a video, you guys will get the notifications for it. And make sure you guys do the same thing for my CM Brothers. I know on the Talking Native YouTube channels. That's pretty much it, guys. Talk to you later.